students now we are going to discuss the economics um, economics part of our uh, paper 3 so we are going to discuss question number 3 and uh, question number uh, 12 students first let's uh, start with the discussion of question number 3 how did land reforms in some parts of the country help to improve the socio economic conditions of marginal and small farmers that's the question so here what are the words which should be given importance in this question or this what are they means let me write write the words first so we have to structure our answer based on these words number one land reforms and it's clearly given it's in some parts of the country so that's the understanding what we should have uh, not in the entire country in some parts of the country it became successful then how it uh, improved the socio economic conditions of marginal and small farmers so we have to structure our answer by giving importance to these words which are given in the question so this is the area framework based on which we are going to uh, structure our answer so how the answers can be structured for this question it's a 10 mark question uh, so uh, five or six points based on that we can uh, structure our structure our answer using this uh, context of the question so now we have to start the answer with a decent introduction introduction you can give introduction according to your own choice uh, introduction we all know about the land reforms well in detail so give a small brief about the uh, land reforms give a small introduction about it is a uh, it was a post independent exercise which was carried uh, carried uh, in india uh, with, with the intentions of uh, uh, socialistic objectives and then uh, to remove institutional discrepancies or to improve agriculture production whatever may be so I give any sort of a small brief introduction for this question then we have to get into the answer so the answer is you can you can start the answer by giving a uh, um, uh, proper heading what is that what what type of heading can be given so the heading is socio economic impact of land reforms on marginal and small farmers so you give a heading like the, like that here socio economic impact socio economic impact on marginal and small farmers socio economic impact on marginal and small farmers on marginal and small farmers okay like this we should have a, we can give a heading like this then we have to pro proceed with the answers how to proceed where to start because land reform is a a uh, very big concept okay very big exercise which was carried out in india where to start what to write for that okay uh, let me give you a small uh, clue based on which you can structure your answer what is that we all know that land reform was having certain components within it what were they for example the component like abolition of zamindari we know it as a component of land reforms like that security of tenure and uh, land ceiling like that many components were there within the land reforms so that can be taken here as a subheadings or the area based on which we, we we can structure our answer so how the how those points uh, should be applied with reference to the context of our question that we are going to do it now for example now we are going to make the point first point first point i am going to tell you the uh, point now uh, uh, frame the point that you can write in two ways one is you can write the point in general then you can underline the keyword or else you can give the heading subheading subheading under the subheading you can you can write your answer so how the what is the first point land reforms we uh, now the point is we all know that the land reforms uh, implemented the process of abolition of zamindari that you can write here land reforms had implemented the abolition of zamindari which in turn removed the domination of intermediaries in agriculture and then as a result okay this enabled the improvement of socio-economic conditions of marginal and small farmers how because the these people they acted as intermediary between the state and between the farmers and whatever they uh, decided everything was levied on the farmers uh, starting from exorbitant rent and the kind of the practices whatever they practice it was not helping the farmers to improve the their living standards but when these people got removed this created a kind of uh, completely the people those who are dominating the agricultural picture 
So we removed them and then as a result, okay, these people, they are able to have a breath of fresh air because of that, because of removal of those intermediaries. So that is the understanding. But how we have to write the point? So point should be simple. Abolition of zamindari enabled the removal of institutional discrepancies or the domination of zamindars in our agriculture economy and which in turn resulted in the socio-economic conditions, improvement in the socio-economic conditions of our marginal and small farmers. And then second point, how we can write, second point is we all know that uh, the land reforms had the second um, uh, component called as, uh, as uh, security of tenure, that can be taken here. What is security of tenure? One is abolition of zamindari, how it improved the socio-economic condition. Second point is security of tenure. And then here we all know that before the implementation of land reforms, the farmers were not having any security of their tenure. So because of that, uh, if I am a farmer, if I am doing agriculture, at any point of time, I may be evicted from a farmland. Because of that, farmers were not having any incentives to do any investments on their agricultural land. As a result, the production was going down and productivity was very going backward. But because of the enactment of the security of tenure through the land reforms, we are able to provide a kind of security on the minds of the farmers. Because of that, they got incentivized to do more investments on agriculture. Because of the investments on agriculture, these marginal and small farmers, they were able to make some decent returns through the agriculture productivity. So when it happened, automatically the improvement in the socio-economic conditions of the farmers. So that is the second point, how the security of tenure enabled them, how it created a sort of confidence on the minds of farmers and how it resulted in investments and how the investments connected with the economic part and then ultimately the social, uh, socio-economic part of this, uh, uh, this question. Then next one, we all know that land reform had a uh, feature called as land to the tiller because before that, we are observing the uh, events like uh, scenario like absentee landlordism, which means the person who were the owners, they were not doing cultivation. The people, those who were the cultivators, they were not the owners. But this actually uh, made the, uh, uh, because we ensured that land must be under the hands of the tiller, land to the tiller. When it was implemented, so automatically the land were, lands were given to the farmers. As a result, we are able to create the sort of, the, because at the time, they were, they were just a mere uh, peasants. But because of the enactment of land to the tiller, through the land reforms, able to convert the peasants to become the owners in agriculture and this, it empowered them socially and economically also. So, next point is, land to the tiller can be taken and then you can write the point. You can frame the point according to your choice. I am giving idea how the point can be structured. And the next point. Land reforms had one more uh, component called as regulation of rent because we know that uh, this we would, we would have um, studied in history. Uh, the, during the time of the British period, the zamindars, the intermediaries, they were charging uh, exorbitant rent on the farmers, rack renting, like, like that. So whatever the farmers earned, they were not able to have it with them. They have to share it with the uh, zamindars. Otherwise, they may not be given the land, they may be evicted. But this process of regulation of rent because the rents were regulated as one-fourth of the produce or one-fifth or one-third, like the things got regulated. Because of that, farmers were able to uh, make some decent returns on the investments, what they did in agriculture. So, this, this returns, what they made, it improved the socio-economic conditions of marginal and small farmers in our economy. So, that can be the next point. So, the point is regulation of rent, how it enabled regulation of rent, how it enabled the, so, so you take a point, then connect with the marginal small farmers, then socio-economic condition. Then what uh, point next we can write? Next point is, we, we know that next component of land reform is uh, that um, ceiling on land holdings. The, the land owners, uh, they, they don't, they cannot hold the lands beyond a particular limit. Ceiling was levied and all, no? That you can uh, bring here. Ceiling on land holdings. Then we have to frame the point based on that aspect. Ceiling on land holdings, <laughs> on land holdings. So under this, what we did, we try, we tried, we just implement, we tried uh, 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 getting the lands from those um, uh, landlords, and then uh, we, we were doing the process of redistributing it to the landless masses. As a result, this actually empowered the the completely the rural society of India, 
and, and, and along with that the marginal and small farmers will benefit on a large scale. So the, in this way you, got, you can write the point. So the re, re, redistribution of land holdings to the uh, peasants or the small farmers, this actually enabled the improvement of socio-economic conditions of the peasant, of, of the people, those who are earlier peasants in our economy. So like this you can, you can just take this point and then you can connect the point with the context of this question in this way. Then what we can write, we all know that next point called as uh, consolidation of land holdings or cooperative farming, uh, it, it was one of the exercise under land reforms, that you can write here. So the point is cooperative farming, land reforms enabled the consolidation of land holdings or cooperative farming among the farmers. This enabled them to have more marketable uh, access or they are able to come together and then able to have more access to the market and then they are able to do agriculture in a collective way, in this angle you can write, and then while doing, while doing it in that manner, they are able to improve their socio-economic conditions, it helped the farmers to improve the socio-economic conditions of uh, conditions. In this way you can take a point, cooperative farming or consolidation of land holdings and how it got connected with the socio-economic conditions. So these are the ways how we can take the components of land reforms and how we have to connect it with the socio-economic conditions of marginal and small farmers. Then after writing all this, then we have to give a proper conclusion by having this context of the question in our mind. Though, lo though land reforms, it enabled the improvement of socio-economic conditions of marginal and small farmers, it was not successful in the entire part of India, in the entire India. It was successful in some parts of the country only. The question part is some parts of the country only. Like states like Kerala and West Bengal where there was a highly uh, political will was associated there it was successful. In remaining parts of India it was partially successful. So in this angle we shall write a point based on this perspective and then we have to conclude the answer. So this is the way how the question can be written. It is a one, uh, it, 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 it is a suggest, uh, it is a one way. The next thing, uh, next way is what you can do here in not write the subheading and all. Directly you, you just you have to, you, you can write the point in a point by point manner. Here what you can do is you can write the flow chart, anything whatever way. So you can, uh, a flow chart so they can draw the circle, within there you can write the points. So you, you can apply your you know, innovative way of presenting the answers. So this is the plot, how the answer should be written for this question. Now we are going to, uh, for, we are going to discuss the answer for question number 12. Now the question number 12 goes like this, investment in infrastructure is essential for more rapid and inclusive economic growth, discuss in the light of India's experience, this is the question. So what are the words which should be given importance? The thing is, first we are starting with the word investment in, in infrastructure. So the thing is investments, investment in infrastructure. is essential for more rapid and inclusive growth, for rapid growth as well as inclusive growth, rapid and inclusive growth. So we have to write our answer based on this perspective, with this context. Then what is the next part? Discuss in the light of India's experience, in the light of India's experience. Discuss in the light of India's experience. So it is not, question is not about uh, explain, not mention, so it discuss. So we have to go little uh, bit elaborate about the points what you are, what we are taking, uh, what you are, what you are writing, writing here, what we are taking here or what we are writing here. So how the points must be, how the points must be framed for this question that we are going to uh, do it now. For students, give a introduction, proper introduction. How the introduction, introduction uh, may be based on this area, investments in infrastructure. So give a introduction. So how the introduction can be given here? So now let us take this uh, uh, context and then let us give an introduction. Investments, uh, we all know about the how crucial, how important, how essential the investments in infrastructure uh, for an economy. Based on that, you can give a small introduction. The infrastructure acts like a wheel of an economy because it is the wheel based on which all the, so the entire sectors of an economy, so they, they rest on. For example, the primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector, entire economy, they rest on the infrastructure. So when the wheels, when the wheels are, when they, when they are rolling, when they are moving, automatically, so the economy also progresses. But when the wheel, when the wheel does not move, 
automatically all the other sectors so because all the three sectors they rest on the wheels here we have the wheels these wheels are the infrastructure when the wheels are rolling when they are moving economy also progresses when it stops then economy also stops when it punctures or uh, whatever happens when the wheels doesn't roll on the economy also stagnates so the point is the introduction is so the infrastructure is a essentially you can write in infrastructure as a engine or as a wheel whatever you can write it is your choice the words you can use according to your choice so the thing is infrastructure acts as the engine as the wheels based on which all the other sectors rest on so here the all the other sectors the primary secondary tertiary well, the, their movement depends on the movement of these wheels when the wheels when they are moving automatically the economy progresses when the wheel stops economy also stagnates so in this context investments in infrastructure is very essential for the movement of this entire sectors which means the entire country like this you can write the introduction based on your own perspective anyway anyway you can write according to the context of the question then we have to get into the second part rapid and inclusive growth so i'm going to give the answer in the uh, uh, in certain two parts one is say a small uh, uh, brief on, on this segment then more importance to this segment so here rapid inclusive and, and then first i'm going to be going to give a small idea second first part is how the infrastructure is enabling rapid and inclusive growth i'm going to give a small brief then the same rapid inclusive growth is going to be applied with respect to india's experience how we are able to achieve the rapid and inclusive growth with the help of india's experience so for the first part is so how the infrastructure enables the rapid inclusive growth so here how it enables the rapid growth because we know that if the we have a, a production center here now you can give a heading infrastructure and how it is connected to the rapid and inclusive growth of an economy you can give a heading like this rapid and inclusive growth so which means you are going to write the answer for this segment of the question rapid and inclusive growth now the first point is infrastructure it actually it it actually it connects it connects the raw materials or else the resources with the production centers and then it makes a linkage between the production and then raw material availability and also the consumption points of an economy so here we have the consumers here we have the producers here we have the raw materials so to meet all the three all the uh, for example we have to bring the raw materials to the producers and then from here we have to take to the consumers all the things can take place in an uninterrupted manner in an economy only when you have the proper infrastructure all the things the pre requirements must be available in the economy if not then the economy cannot have the rapid growth it may have the growth but it cannot have the rapid growth the word is rapid accelerated growth of an economy we may have a growth but the growth may may not be as per our expectation so how means you can write the point because it connects all these points of an economy all the points are properly connected only with the help of this infrastructure so in this angle we have to we have to just first you have to address the context of the question then second point second thing is how it brings the infrastructure brings the inclusive growth of an economy how it brings means infrastructure when you have the solid infrastructure in an economy then we will be automatically having the rapid economic growth in our country when we have the rapid growth of of, of, our, of our country when the country is rapidly growing automatically the country delivers the employment opportunities to the people when the employment opportunities are delivered to the people automatically the people will get the job and then people will get the money in their hands and then people actually they will get the purchasing power on everything so automatically the people we are developing the capabilities of all the people of our country the growth becomes more inclusive because when the infrastructure converts into the growth growth becomes the opportunities for the people so the opportunities we are we are we are seeing it in the form of the income and jobs among, among the people then the infrastructure has got the ability of bringing inclusive growth in our country so the point is simple but you have to connect it here infrastructure we are connecting to the growth and then how it brings the inclusive growth by giving the jobs and then and then giving the income uh, uh, making ability among the people then the next thing is infrastructure how it's normally the one is regarding the employment opportunity and inclusive growth that we have written what is another way of bringing inclusive growth with the help of infrastructure now imagine we have a, a, a rural area which is disconnected from the mainland 
here the people they have to make a long walk or they have to make a travel of 10 or 15 kilometers they, we don't have any proper bus facility or any mode we don't have so here they, they, we cannot observe any economic prosperity these people may not be uh, included in the growth and developmental story of the country but when we build a proper infrastructure then automatically those people will be pro they will get connected to the mainland so with respect to the employment opportunity all the facilities they may be able to avail they may be able to utilize with the proper connection with the proper infrastructure investments so it is it is actually so what what the infos is doing infrastructure is connecting all the length and breadth of the country so no one is left out in the economy when none is left out automatically then what a what is the resultant outcome the possibility is undoubtedly the inclusive growth so in this perspective you can write the third point so one is how the infrastructure enables the uh, makes the linkages production distribution consumption then we are saying the substantiating the rapid uh, economic growth point then second one is regarding this uh, point how it provides employment and how it becomes more inclusive growth then the third point is how the uh, it connects all the point how we doing the connection how it actually helps the people to move from one part to another part and now the the growth can become more inclusive this is just uh, i am addressing only the first part so in this angle you can conclude by making the proper connections and um, uh, connectivity so we are able to enable we could be able to enable inclusive growth or achieve inclusive growth in a country then we are going to enter into the because it is 15 mark question so based on the 250 words so now we have spent some 100 words or 110 words for the for this part it, uh, up to this point then we have to write about india's experience discuss india's experience the thing is how india is able to achieve rapid and inclusive growth with the help of infrastructure investments that should be our next area so here you give the next heading what is the next heading how india okay so how india is able to achieve rapid and uh, inclusive economic growth with the help of infrastructure investments here students um, you always uh, know that infrastructure can be uh, uh, approached in many dimensional perspective the one perspective of classifying the infrastructure is infrastructure is of two types one is there are certain infrastructures investments which we call them as economic infrastructure of a country there are certain segment of investments in infrastructure which we call them as social infrastructure this understanding first of we should have so what is meant by economic infrastructure the investments done on the economic sectors of a country you may do on the transport you may do on the uh, on the rail projects you may do on the agriculture sector industrial sector or service sector the communication transport whatever you are doing we call them with the economy with, with, with the main intention of bringing some economic outcome in a country that is called as economic infrastructure next thing is social infrastructure so the in the investments in infrastructure which may have more social outcome example when you spend on the schools when you spend on building the hospitals when you spend on bringing rural connectivity yes giving some uh, uh, drinking water sanitation facilities to the rural people so these things and all will come under the category of the social infrastructure you should have this kind of idea then based on this when you frame the answer then exactly you would have address the demand of the question so here there are two ways of framing the answer the balance 120 or 130 words how we can frame means by taking the economic part how the india's experience how india was able to achieve rapid economic growth with the investments in infrastructure that may be the first part then you can write how the socially we are able to have uh, achieve inclusive growth with the help of our infrastructural investments or else you can combine both the segments then you can write the answer that is your choice so there are three ways one is first write the economic uh, growth with help of uh, in, uh, in uh, infrastructure investments or the social um, inclusive growth with the help of infrastructure investments or combinedly you can write a point how the points can be written now let me give let me give you some um, uh, tell you some points you take the agriculture so the heading is india's experience now next thing is india's experience we are going to discuss india's experience now the first one india's experience no so what we have done so based on that what we have achieved what we are not able to achieve that you can write discuss part no so here the first one say first you can write uh, you can take the sector agriculture in agriculture since the times of our five year plan 
what happened we know about the first five year plan we did more investments on agricultural irrigation infrastructure so in india experience what we experienced we did more investments on agri irrigation infrastructure so agriculture uh, so so, irrig so the investments on irrigation infrastructures in agriculture it resulted in the rapid growth of our agriculture sector which we had witnessed during the uh, du during our du during the times of our post independence period so are able to un understand the point so here we are talking about the agricultural irrigation infrastructure which we have done in our economy and how it enabled the economic growth because here i am telling the point based on the rapid economic growth segment then how it enabled the infrastructure investment how it will enable the inclusive growth uh, so that's the second part next part or you can combine uh, manner you can write both the things so i'll tell you that so how agri how the investments on the agri irrigation infrastructure enabled the growth of our economy because we had done adequate infrastructure in building the dams and canals so uh, wherever possible because of that we are able to improve the productivity as well as the production in our agriculture so it's india's experience number 1 second angle india actually builds more rural roads in our economy and india spent money on the build, building of warehouses and then the storage facilities all this enabled the uh, proper connectivity the apmc markets so here we have some drawbacks also so that i am not uh, mentioning here so first we are writing the positives so the thing is so here the rural infrastructure all the things were done by the government and most of the investments were Uh, public sector based investments in our in, in our economy as a result we are able to achieve rapid economic growth in our agriculture then next you can write the point is industrial infrastructure example uh, the industrial corridors it is the investments done on the industrial infrastructure this actually brings more connectivity and enabling rapid economic growth in our country and then you can cite some uh, uh, delhi mumbai industrial corridor chennai bangalore industrial corridors like that you can cite some examples also industrial corridors then here you can uh, quote the other industrial sector example the fourth one the special economic zones special what are special economic zones these are the geographical areas which are chosen by the government where we provide the top quality or the world class infrastructure and then which act as a point which will incentivize the people to make more investments so that you can write here special economic zones or the top class are the world class infrastructures provided to the industries which helps us to improve the exports and then helps us to generate more forex earnings then you can write the next thing nimzs also national investment manufacturing zones which were which, these are the industrial infrastructures which were created under the national manufacturing policy of 2011 so these actually the act as industrial townships where infrastructure was given by the government and this enabled the increase in the manufacturing output of our economy so that is we are we are talking with respect to the industrial sector then with respect to the service sector next point we can write the service sector service sector for example um you can take the example of transport or communication or any uh, financial infrastructure for example uh, the uh, take the example of transport or take the example of communication you can write about digital india mission how the digital india mission enabled the economic growth of our country and how the investments on the road infrastructure or rail infrastructure or port infrastructure or the udan scheme of india how it enabled the regional connectivity in our economy and how it enables the movement of the people and how it enables the rapid economic growth like that you can write about the roads rails and the sagarmala project any project you can write quote some india example you can write the point or else you can write the example as the, the gujarat gift city so uh, and then there's a international financial services center where we are planning to make india as one of the hub of international service provide in the in providing international services so while doing that while giving this infrastructure we are aiming for rapid economic growth in the international financial services so in this angle you can write the point so investments in infrastructure enables us to achieve rapid economic growth in the uh, financial services in this angle there are many points so it's a 15 mark question i we have given many points for this so this is one aspect where i have talked only about the how the investments in infrastructure are enabling the economic growth of a country only that part we have seen here what is second part how the infrastructures are bringing the inclusive growth so that it can be next heading india's experience here before writing the answer you can give a small uh, subheading uh, india's experience with uh, with uh, economic growth due to infrastructure then here you can write inclusive growth due to infrastructure 
how we can write the points one by one. The point number one is uh, India has done adequate in, uh, investments on the health infrastructure. Because of that, we are able to uh, even manage the even pandemic, even the crisis happened during the pandemic times. We are able to uh, even now we are able to manage with the help of the investments done on health infrastructure. And then regarding the school, regarding the schools. So here we are able to address the disparity between the uh, uh, between the rich and the poor by giving them the educational facilities by doing investments on the school infrastructure. Or then you can write the example as Jandan Yojana. What is Jandan Yojana? It is a bank account to the people. But the Jandan Yojana is the investments done on the financial infrastructure. We know about the Jam Trinity. The Jandan Yojana, Aadhaar and then the mobile. So here we have mentioned Digital India and then we are connecting. Digital India, so here the Jam, in this example, the, here we, have talk, we talked about in economic way. Here how it enabled the improvement on the, so it enabled the inclusive growth of our people. So we are able to provide the bank account. It's not only a bank account. Through the bank account, we are able to provide multiple social benefits and on the different uh, uh, DBTs are delivered to the people. In this angle, it is able to deliver the inclusive growth in our economy. And then here, agriculture return or irrigation. So here we talked about the irrigation. We talked about the rural roads, everything. But here, the same point, economic point can be written in the, in the social angle also. For example, the investments done on the warehouses or the food corporation investments done on the food corporation of India uh, warehouses or the PDS systems of our economy. It enables us to, re, uh, to implement the food security of our country, which is more inclusive in nature. And here we talked about the industrial corridor. We talked about special economic zone. We talked about the NIMZ. And here when we talk about the, the CITCOs, state industrial development corporations, or when you talk about the industrial estates, you connect with the MSME. So the kind of investments or the we done the on the um, small in the, uh, small industries development corporation areas. So it acts as an incentive for the MSMEs. So which provides the uh, which, which enables the regional development which tries to create some balance among um, in the different parts of our country. So we are able to provide bring in inclusive growth in all part of our country with the help of the promotion of the by, by supporting the promotion of MSMEs. So here, when we bring the connect the point in the food security angle or PDS angle, this becomes social uh, aspect. Same angle here, when you connect with the MSME, this becomes a social aspect. Here, when you talk about the gift city, it is economic perspective. But when you talk about the Jandan Yojana, it is a social perspective. Then we talk about the schools or the hospitals, whatever we talk about in a social dimension. Or else, when we talk about the uh, drinking water, sanitation, uh, rural roads, electricity. So those investments, infrastructure are more social in nature. And even skilling the people, skill development, we are giving them empowerment. It is a social, it is a, it is a, uh, so on those infrastructure, skill development infrastructure, you should not write about skill development, skill development infrastructure is more social in nature. So in this angle, there are different uh, uh, ways how we can discuss the, uh, we can write the answer, but uh, all of it is a discuss part. So how we can write, even though, so we have made more uh, improvements and then more achievements in this uh, by doing the uh, investments in infrastructure. So we got miles to go because there are many areas where we have not properly addressed the, so the demands of our economy, both economically and socially. In this angle, you can write the, point, the points also. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can give the conclusion by connecting all the three areas of the question. So this is the way how we, we, we can write the answer for this question. Yes, with this, I am finishing the discussion part of these two questions. Thank you, students. Thank you.